welcome back guys to the first episode of 2020 new decade same show uh, and hopefully start with a bang with this one uh, tonight we've obviously got James Dillon uh, back in, with, in the studio with us and our guest is, is Chris Shaw tonight thanks very much for coming on mate I thanks appreciate it us, mate. Uh, obviously you're in here doing a bit of training uh, Chris is it just a week you're in you're in training for um, I've started coming down on Sundays um, right. for the kind of sparring James kind of is let us come in on Sundays and stuff like that training then over the festive period I was in basically every day training yeah. um, our gym was shut for two weeks so I was in here putting in the work as, as part of it as well obviously coming into an MMA gym obviously you're fighting and one you're still fighting Thai but it is the, the smaller gloves you're fighting on uh -huh, it's, um, it's a massive difference mm -hmm. um, when I was matched before a fight I never had, I just bought a pair of gloves and I was hitting pads with them. Aye. Um, but I never actually get any experience sparring <coughs> with them. Um, and I think about a month ago, I've come in and started sparring and it's a massive difference. So it's probably good. I never got to fight in July and it's, it's came at a good time and I've had a lot of practice with them. It's a huge difference. Is, is it for, obviously, is it for the defensive side then, the main difference? Um, obviously, smaller gloves, obviously. It's the defensive a, side right, and aye. the kind of clinching side and all that mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's massive. You've, you can't just with the big gloves. You can if you cover up, most of the shots will land in the gloves, mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of weather the storm and then move back and wait till they kind of finish their combo and then look for your counters. But with the small gloves, they can of cover up. There's Aye. too many gaps, and if your guards even up, they're going over the top of they're going through the guard. Um, so it's a massive difference. So, so it's a fence that adds a bit more danger to it. Then. Oh, definitely, <laughs> especially with guys that have like three hundred odd fights and Aye. stuff like that. Aye. Um, and eight ounce gloves, you know what I mean? And then you're gaining four ounce gloves. So um, it's good, but it's good. It's it's pressure on the ties as well. The ties were usually counting on everybody and they were better kickers and stuff. And it was usually Westerners that were better boxers mm -hmm. and be able to land shots. But um, it kind of evens up the playing field a bit. Aye, it gives you, obviously gives Aye. you a better chance. When you're it gives you a better against. chance with the smaller gloves and stuff like that as well. So. so when you say that, the amount of fights the ties have, it's, it's absolutely insane the amount they, they guys fight. It's nuts. It really is mental. Um, but so let's talk about the uh, obviously one AFC you've you've signed for a, a promotion you've spoke about a lot in this show and I don't think everybody still knows yet. I just, they are so big out in Asia. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've signed it's a six fight deal, is that? Yeah, six fight deal. Yeah. Six fight deal. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say the guy's name you're fighting because I, I was trying to pronounce the second name, but I, mm -hmm. I was murdering it. You were scheduled to fight fight uh, yeah. Rodlick in August, was it? It was. It was meant to be on August. I was meant to fight Rodlick. It was meant to be another time before that. Then mm -hmm. it was Rodlick. It was replacing him. Um, just a few problems with my medicals and stuff like that. Um, yeah. One championship, like it's the first time for like Ty that we've had to do medical tests mm -hmm. and uh, MRIs, eye tests, everything. It's just kind of standard tests for like, likes of UFC fighters and stuff. Yeah. But it's the first time I've came across it, but I had to get my test done. And before I flew out the last time, I head out to Thailand to finish my camp. Um, I get MRI results back, and one said a doctor wanted to do another MRA and MRV test mm -hmm. um, just to check. It was like a vein, I've got an enlarged vein in the back of my head, but. It's just, that's kind of normal for me. Um, I've never had any problems with it yeah. before or anything, but they just had to check it and stuff like that. So when the last time I was training out in Thailand and stuff like that, um, they said we'd do the MRA and MRV over there. But it ended up, it was too late. It was a massive show, so they couldn't, right. they, they couldn't wait any longer. So stuff like that, they replaced me. It was kind of sad because I'd trained hard for it and stuff like that, but it's one of those things, so... Is it potentially a blessing in disguise? Or like you're seeing a bit of small gloves that gives you that. Aye. You're seeing that extra um, time then. I, I'm a believer in everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, I think that time before that, I'd, it was it wasn't a great camp. Um, I'd no any training in kind of the sparring gloves and stuff yeah. like that. So um, I was just being a wee bit naive yeah. with the gloves and stuff. Like I thought it's just tie boxing, the same idea, but it's massive difference. Aye. And then. Um, my leg filled up. I don't know what it was. I had a bite in my leg or something and I trained with it and it wasn't right for about four days. Then went to the hospital, they were like, just take some um, antibiotics. And I had to go to the hospital later at night and get kept in for eight days. My leg just filled up. It was like a, a kind of bite, went through different layers of skin. My leg just filled up. So like it was huge. Almost, like a staff or Kind of staff like infection, staff it was the exact same idea. It just went through the second layer of skin um, and that's what it was. I was in the hospital for eight days, had eight days training, then doing these tests in between, then went to Thailand. Uh, and, you know, the day before I went for the MRA and MRV test, we were clinching and I got five stitches in my eye, <laughs> which I was still adamant. Gary was saying, just leave it. You can't fight if you get five aye. stitches, but get five stitches. And I was adamant I was going to cut the stitches out before we flew over to Manila. 
Um, <laughs> but it was just, it, it was a bad camp, but I was just wanting to fight. You were that eager to fight and fight for one championship that you were, you were doing everything to, to make, it, make it. It's a kind of blessing in disguise now that everything's happened for a reason. It's gave me more time to prepare and get better as an athlete as well. I think for what you've said there as well, between stitches and uh, massive infection and then the MRIs, the MRI, uh, yeah, it's maybe all the signs uh, were pointing. It was all, the, it was all the signs were pointing that I shouldn't do it, but Aye. you're just stubborn, you want to fight and you've put the work in, you're like, no, I want to, I want to fight and I want to put on a good show. And I'm presuming then you caught the ov- obviously the fight with uh, Rodlick and uh, Andrew Miller. What, what, did you, what did you make of the fight itself? And- Andrew Miller done well. Mm-hmm. Um, he was counting on with the, he was doing the right things. He was doing the, using the teeth and the left kick uh, to keep him away and stop him punching. But he also was shelling up too much and he was going backwards too much. <clears throat> um, right. With a pressure fighter you need to give him something to worry about. So he was using the right weapons, but you need to be a bit more aggressive as well. Kind of mm-hmm. keep letting him come forward. And then it was kind of a shame. He was kind of, he was doing well to a certain degree, landed some nice shots, and then he, he was in range, and he stepped into southpaw as he's in range. So he's just walked right into the right hand. Even if he came across, if he was changing it southpaw, and he could have used his left hand, he'd have been covered and stuff, but he just, he just get caught. It was a nice shot. Rodlet's a hard hitter. And he's, he's waiting for those shots. He, he doesn't throw a lot, but he's just... He'll try and smash a leg, your front leg, and he's looking just to land heavy shots. And with a guy like that, now obviously I've, I don't I don't watch as much as I'm sure obviously yourself as well, James. I've watched I watched uh, Andy's fight with him, and mm-hmm. is it is it normal for Rodlick then? He, he, I know a lot of Thai guys, especially in Thailand, the fights start very slow. Uh, is that ever an opportunity then for you to go at him quite hard, or, or would that uh, be a mistake? Um, in Thailand, like they usually start the first two rounds, they start really mm-hmm. slow, just because right. of the gambling and stuff like that. They're waiting for them big money rounds, which is three, four, and five, mm-hmm. in which. That's where you kind of. That's the fights won in three, four, and five. If somebody wins three and four, they'll mostly just sit back in the fifth round. First two rounds, they're just feeling themselves out and letting the kind of the crowd bet round about. Um, so the difference with one championship is three rounds. So they're just going to go at it. Right. Um, but Rodlick, Rodlick has took that style in one championship that for the first round he is going. Mm-hmm. He's going for it and he's going for the knockout for the start. Aye. Um, the other ties might start, like they start quite slow the, the first round, then the second and third. Um, kind of a road tongue that's fighting Jordan Haggerty, uh, Jonathan Haggerty. Um, he starts fast as well. I think he knows it's three rounds and he's kind of fast paced as well. Aye. And, and that's a point. And you feel like this is it's a massive opportunity for you to make a statement mm-hmm. on One FC, which uh, is obviously it's a massive stage, mm-hmm. especially in Asia. The amount of Asia, the amount of views they get is, is is insane when you look at the numbers. It's crazy the kind of audience that they're getting. Mm-hmm. Um, just the fact that it's going right to an app as well. Aye. Um, people are just watching it for their phone at their work and whatever else. So it's getting great uh, kind of great coverage and stuff like that. But. Um, He's fought Liam Harrison, he's beat Liam Harrison, yeah. he put Liam Harrison down and stuff. It was a good entertaining fight. Um, I think Liam was kind of in the pocket too much. He mm-hmm. kind of stand and traded with him too much. I think if Liam fought a bit smarter, which he usually does all the time, he kicked him moving and stuff like that. Um, without the, if Rodlet never knocked him down, I think Liam would have won it because mm-hmm. um, he was doing well. Um, the same with Andy Miller. Andy Miller was doing well as well. So he's very beatable. I just yeah. need to fight smart. Don't get caught in his game. He's going to be trying to encourage me to keep going forward, and mm-hmm. when he's when I'm hitting and moving him back, he's going to be tapping his head and telling you to come forward and try to pull you into the centre of the ring. He's just wanting a war, aye. So you just need to fight smart. So uh, then it's just it's keep your composure and mm-hmm. stick to your game plan. That's it, and that's that's obviously the best best route to victory. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, James, for you, would, how much of a difference do you feel the the changing for the big to the small gloves are, is in? It is massive. Like it's it is, it's. Almost a completely different sport mm-hmm. um, if, if you approach it right. The, the defensive th- thing, I think, is, is a big thing. Like like Chris was saying, you can't you can't shell up and not move your feet if your hands are up and a, your feet have to be moving. Right. Right? Like you can't kill both layers of defence. Um, some of the angles of the punches coming through and stuff are different than like the opportunity to peel the guard away and, and even like the cage is a is a factor there. That's a different shape. There's no give where guys can lean on the ropes, and, and it's it's not a comfortable place to be with the cage where yeah. you can maintain a bit of a stance when you're against the ropes. You still have your foot underneath the rope, and you, you still be in a forty-five degree like staggered stance. But Aye. when your your back foot hits that cage, the next thing you know you're going to be square. <clears throat> so lateral movement's going to be more important, like, like Chris was saying, and and just the wee the subtle subtle angles, um, and then just the. Even the shot selection, if you watch a lot of the, the fights, the guys are not kicking as much straight away. It's like mm-hmm. 
it's like there's not as much padding on my hands. I'm going to throw my hands more. That it, it suits the punchers and the elbow guys. Um, but it's 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 made it exciting that and the, the free the free three minute rounds. It is like a completely different sport, but it, it's fairly exciting to watch. Do you think it's good, good one FC doing that as well? Because it's obviously it's gonna gain, gain big opportunities to guys that uh, fight mm. tie. And I'm assuming they've changed it that way to try and. Get the finish, mere finishes, and sort of make it more, maybe more appealing to the Western Western fans as well. Because I like it. I think the the more chance for for guys like Chris to get on these bigger platforms and for people to see them and for them to get treated right, like what Chris was saying about the medicals and stuff like mm-hmm. that. That should be across the board, and even getting paid better. Like these these guys, you watch some of these Thai fighters fight and. And the way they're getting paid is, is atrocious. Like there's there's guys have two and three amateur or pro MMA fights, mm-hmm. make, making a, maybe a couple of thousand pounds. Where some of these Thai guys are they're killing themselves. They're, they're they're so dedicated to their craft, and they're like forty and fifty fights deep, and they're getting the same amount of money. Whereas hopefully we we want to see these guys are getting the, the bigger platforms. They're getting in arenas and steady like fucking working men's clubs and, and sports centres. There's there's cameras on them. There's the app thing. They're getting all the medical support they need um, they've got the opportunity to bring sponsors on board for people to see sponsors and and they get paid but, but they should be getting paid and whatever they're getting paid is probably not even enough to be mm. fair but it's, it's definitely a, a step better than, than ticket deals and, and shit for f- for full time athletes like it's it's a good thing it's all, all positive the more, the more outlets for guys for martial artists to, to make money doing what they love the, the better for me I, th- I think that's a, you mentioned something there I think it's quite an important one as well is it's not just what you're getting paid for the, the promotion itself it's the exposure they give you and the opportunities that that mm. then because I mean sp- sponsors when they see the numbers that maybe you can get for uh, sponsoring the guy who's fighting them by uh, one one fighting championship that that is a, a big source of revenue that you could potentially potentially look at gaining uh, I mean in, without disclosing any numbers uh, mm. Are you happy with how One FC have looked after you so far? And One FC are paying better than everybody else. Aye. Um, the six fight deal and stuff like that. The same with it, like James was saying about the medicals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You're you're getting proper treatment. Like you're getting looked after. And, um, but it's the fact the money is well. We're getting paid a bit better, uh, a lot better than what I'm in the UK. Aye. In for a broad fights and stuff like that. So you're probably you're roughly getting about a double mm-hmm. the amount that you're getting. Um, and it's the fact that you get the six fights, you do well your six fights and it's the other contract from there. Aye, it's giving you the opportunity then going and Aye. earn that, go up to that next tier mm-hmm. of earnings and, and make a living because, I mean, obviously more, a lot of guys, like I'm sure yourself and that, their first thing is they fight for money but money's something that you need obviously to survive. It's, it's, it's hard because I'm myself, I, work, I, I own my own roofing, roofing company mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm not just out seeing jobs and stuff. I'm working out in the tools every day. Then I'm Aye. doing the paperwork and training in the morning. I'm doing that during the day. I get home, showered, something to eat, train, then wake up, basically go home, eat again. That's it. And then that shoe, repeat six days a week. Aye. You know what I mean? Whereas one championship, the money allows you to take like two weeks off or three mm-hmm. weeks off to properly train. I would guess as well that if, if fighters are getting, fighters like I say are getting paid, an amount of money where they can live off their fight money and what they're mm-hmm. earning in their fight career and you don't have to have a, a job to sustain yeah. your fight career effectively uh, it's going to ultimately produce a better fighter that walks into the cage the, the ring yeah. uh, at the e- eventually hopefully second contract maybe one chance I'll be able to no work during the day and stuff like that and be able to just focus on fighting but it, for the now um, you still need to still aye, need to aye, do aye, your job um, and stuff like that and I think if I was a full-time athlete and getting the proper rest in between, I'd be a lot better fighter as well. Because um, you're getting that proper rest in between. Aye, that's, that's even true. taking the three weeks off before a fight is massive. Like you can see the, your energy levels and everything going up and how how you perform hitting pads and everything else in the gym when you're properly training and getting proper rest in between. That, that's something that I've, most fighters mention. It's that fighters that are have went through working to then be able to fight full time it's mm-hmm. that recovery is so important mm-hmm. uh, in between it because obviously you can go into the gym the next day a, a well rested and better version of you rather than tired and beat up that's that's what it's all about it's massive difference so so we uh, getting the getting the offer for one when did you when did you first hear one were interested and in, and how how did it sort of come about um we can I get a couple of messages back in like February and stuff like that so we 
we kind of knew about it, but it was speak about it before. Um, mm. A couple of messages, we sent our details over them and stuff like that, and we're just waiting for it to happen. But after a few months, we weren't too sure if it was going to come together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it started coming together on, like, I think it was March. Um, I fought Rambo on the Yoko show. Um, I beat Rambo, which is a high, kind of high-level tie. Yeah. Um, I beat him, and then after that, and two weeks after that, they offered me a contract. So, so, so that, that fight you won? That fight basically got me it, definitely. And and, and tell, the, the Thai community is one championship, a place a lot of fighters are looking at now, as a, as a place to go. I would say it's the highest level in kind of Thai and kickboxing at the moment. Yeah, um, you still get kind of glory for kind of kickboxing, yeah. but Thai side, um, one championship's massive. I think even the kickboxing now, like they're offering the, the eight-man tournament and stuff like that, the Petrosia and the money he got and stuff like that for winning the tournament, um, it's massive. Uh, it's good that they won are, won are doing that, they're not just... Obviously, MMA purely. Uh, they've obviously started out in that, but they're branching out and into combat sports, which helps. Obviously, all the different athletes for different, um, different disciplines. But it's it's good for the fans as well because it gets your mix in there. And it's interesting because a lot of people that just even follow Thai, mm-hmm. if they follow Thai and they see there's an MMA fight, they start watching some of the MMA fights and see that it's exciting and mm-hmm. interesting. And maybe they weren't interested in MMA before. Um, and same with the kickboxing fights even MMA fans will start watching Thai and it's, it's good for everybody because it's Aye. a good mixture because um, there's fans for everywhere like watching like if they're just kickboxing fans they'll be watching the whole show and then they see the mixture at all so it's brilliant see, see it's smart as well because you get a lot of MMA fans who complain about the about the wrestling the ground game and and I've always thought that if you don't if you you don't like that, why are you not watching mm-hmm. Thai or why are you not watching kickboxing mm-hmm. or that? And then you don't need to worry about the ground game. It's just not going to be stand up. And I know for myself watching one, I've then seen fights that I would normally know have went out my way to mm-hmm. way to seeing. Uh, it's, it, it's good. It's MMA is massive. Like it's, it's right. huge. Um, it's bigger than kickboxing and um, Thai. So it's good if there's MMA fights and MMA fans watching Thai boxing, kickboxing fight. It's brilliant for everything. And have you ever have you ever thought about MMA yourself? I have. It, it was when I was like, I started Thai boxing to do MMA. Right, right. Um, but it was every every year. It was like, right, I've had an arc. Like I'll have four fights this year, and then I'm going to start doing MMA. And then it get to the end of the year, and then it's like another fight pulls you in. Aye. And then in the other year, another fight pulls you in. It's like, right, this year I'll definitely do it, and then. It just happens again, even before the Rambo fight, I was doing jiu-jitsu um, at IXL, BJJ, right. um, with Cami. Um, I was doing that. I was there for about two months, solid, three times a week, getting used to it. I know for a fact I didn't need to get good at jiu-jitsu because oh, yeah. somebody's got to put me in my back. If they know my striker, they're going to take me down. So I was thinking straight away, and then before you know it, I was working away and get asked, can I, do I want to fight the tie? Liam Harrison pulled out and um, tried to take it six weeks' notice and you just get sucked back in you know what I mean right. and then one championship now as well so um, I'll, I'll maybe turn my hand to it definitely eventually I want to do it you know right. what I mean I'm a big fan of it I've watched it for years and what was that like then the first time you first time you get in and uh, done some grappling jiu jitsu and that was it oh, it's frightening um, <laughs> I heard even a ringer I, uh, Cammy Cammy <laughs> trained us at the grip and Martin and uh, Russell who helps with some of the coaching here we're like right. Chris is good at grappling he's good an arm triangle and that, you know, <laughs> I knew a few moves right so, I've, I've just been a fan watching it and stuff like that and we do mess about in the gym sometimes we carry on it starts clenching before you know it, we're on the deck we don't know much we've watched a few YouTube videos and whatever else but I've got a triangle and a few other wee kimuras and stuff like that got a couple I've got three moves or something up my sleeve you um, secretly got one of the grappling dummies in the house that's what it is <laughs> so I had a few go but um, it's frightening to see when like, guys like Cammy and a guy, uh, guy Nate as well. Um, see when they were on top of you, it was frightening. Like you were just like you felt like a toddler, aye, and somebody aye. could have, he could have tapped me out. He could have done anything at the same time. It was frightening as well. It's the feeling of being drowned as well. Like aye. it's a drowning feeling. Um, see when somebody at that level knows what they're doing grappling wise, um, you've got nothing. Like aye. you, you can t- say uh, start standing up, but if he takes me down, I've got nothing. Aye. It's it's frightening. It's a big wake up call as well. Like. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a total different world. I guess as well, coming for you, you're obviously an accomplished striker and mm-hmm. coming for that world to then get into a world that you're, you're obviously mm-hmm. new into and then it, mu- it must be, I guess it's an ego check a wee bit as well, Aye, isn't it? It's, it's like, humbling. Right, there's this other bit. It definitely humbles you. Aye. Um, you see that. It's, it's decent enough. When it starts standing, you're like, right, I'm going to 
do the kind of I've, I'll use my clinch stuff and some of our kind of clinch stuff is wrestling based so I'm alright to a certain degree Aye. but then even when I'm top guys are sweeping me and rolling me I'm like how have I went for a good position into being attacked and now somebody's in my back it, it is frightening um, it's really really good but it's, I've got a lot of respect for MMA guys the fact that how they can like fit all these sports into one like getting good at the striking striking's hard enough I know Aye. tie boxing wise it's you're clenching your elbow and you're kicking your boxing and stuff like that. Like it's hard enough getting good at that. Never mind getting good at the kind of jiu-jitsu wrestling. It's massive. Aye, and um, it's it's hard to put them all together as well. Like it, it, I could imagine if you're getting if you're doing too much of striking, your grappling's getting bad and the levels are going up and down all the time. So it's just try to, for them. You try and juggle all that, it's, it's so impressive. A, a balance and act, really. Uh, but the other thing as well, you've been in here, I'm assuming it benefits the guys you've got in here, James, having having Chris in training. Aye, uh, it's been massive for us. Um, I, I I was a fan of Chris's before we trained him, actually. The first time we trained, I had, Stevie was getting ready to fight Paul Felder. Um, mm. And I had been asking, I'd been trying to think off the top of my head, like, who's, who's the best guys to get some extra sparring in? We, and Chris's name was the, the first guy that came up so we, we've been going through to Chris's and his coach Gary's gym in Glasgow once a week and getting 10 rounds in um, <clears> and I was I was impressed I'd, I'd seen him fight before and was impressed with there but when, when he came when he was coming through here and stuff I knew he'd been doing some grappling with, with Cammy and Nate um, when he was coming through here it's like it's such a good opportunity for guys like Mark Ewan to learn off he, like, he, like he's 20 year old he's, he's best amateur in the country he's going to turn pro next year but you've got you've got a guy coming in with he's so sp- experienced and specialised in that area like he, and these guys are, are, are so open to learning off of people like that it's, it's, it's massive for all years and a couple of sessions I've had even holding pads it's stuff I've been I've been figuring out and um, the same way with Kieran Smith in quite a bit the last month and, and stuff I've been translating back into our classes and our sessions and stuff here so it's been it's been really good for, for everybody and I think all the guys in here have enjoyed like getting to move about with somebody at Chris's level, aye, um, and and pick stuff up off them and stuff as well. So it's been it's been cool for us. It's good that as well that you can come in and you can sort of benefit. It's like the guys here are benefiting for you being in, you're benefiting mm-hmm. for being in here and uh, stuff like that. So it's good that you you can do that. You can obviously help each other out, even though it's different sports uh, or different combat sports rather. It's been massive in here, but as well, it's the it's the span as well. Like mm. everybody's eager, everybody's in the one. I think like the Sunday, like everybody's what to better themselves. Aye. Everybody's trying to. They're not taking everybody's head off. They're not trying to take it. Nobody's. Everybody's trying to beat each other though. Like Aye. they're thinking. Everybody's thinking. They're thinking. Oh, he's landed that shot. They're thinking counters. It's like a big game of chess. So everybody's trying to better each other as well. You know what I mean? And it's just constant. Um, it's brilliant. That's it, and it's, it's. I suppose that's what it's all about. It's about mm-hmm. getting better that small bit every other day, isn't mm-hmm. it? And uh, so, when, when is it you you fly out? Uh, I fly out on the twenty sixth. Twenty sixth, and then so um, you'll just get a couple I'll of days to like, settle. I'll be like the other Monday. Um, get the other Monday. Tuesday will be kind of just a wee bit of running stuff like that. Um, Wednesday you'll be weighing in. Then you've got a kind of hydration test as soon mm-hmm. as you weigh in. That's going to be different for me. And the Thursday as well, you need, there's two weigh ins. Aye. So you weigh in the Wednesday and the first day we've won championship. That that's something we've we've obviously spoke about at length is uh, weight cutting on this show and uh, do you do you like that that the one FC do the hydration like test? Aye, it's good. It's interesting. Like it's, it stops people cutting mass amounts of weight because mm-hmm. some people are near enough killing themselves. To do it. You, I've I've done it myself. Even tried to make sixty one. Um, I think a few times it was. I was still only cutting like maybe three kilo and like the day and stuff. Like that doesn't sound. Like three kilos is not a lot to me, but it could be a lot to somebody else. Aye. But it's what some people are doing before that. Like mm. they might only have three kilo there, but they've cut down for like eighty kilo. It's crazy, and, and it's how they're cutting as well. Because mm-hmm. I'm assuming that obviously you've I'm assuming you've seen some terrible weight cuts in your time live and in person. I've done some terrible. <laughs> 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 uh, some of the we we're on point with stuff now. We we, we Stevie had that sponsor with Mike Dolce and. We had some connections with Lockhart and stuff. We've got everyone on point now, but when we were learning about it and stuff, it was like, we were mean McVeigh and stuff like that. Were, some of the weight cuts were horrific. Um, Graham Turner and stuff as well, like six kilos of water and just like stupid, stupid things. Now looking back, I was like, I can't believe I was that daft doing that. But the the hydration thing is interesting. It's something I think would be really good across the board. Yeah. Um, I know the, the boxers and that get that as well, but. It's, it, hopefully it takes out some of the daft practices because they're, they're terrible for you you notice a lot of the guys that won 
who'd fought elsewhere were moving up a weight class like Aye, Ben Askren up to 84 and, and the, the product's better that way like the, you're not getting that depleted guy and it doesn't come it doesn't become just about making the weight um, mm-hmm. what we tend to do with the guys and here is when, when they start making making about making weight then I was like it's time to move weight because it should always be about the contest like the, the your skills versus his skills or your athleticism versus him no but like oh, everyone will be alright once I make weight and Unfortunately, with the, with the weight classes in MMA, with the with, with the bigger gaps and stuff, you're going to get guys still using some of these antiquated practices to make weight. But I think if if the UFC like brought up over the hydration test and stuff like that, then it'd be a good thing. I think even things like well, California's brought in that thing with the after you win the test you're on Aye. the night, and if you're over a certain percentage, you get told you kind of fight this weight class again in the state and. Even if they, like when the Yasada guy comes here to test Stevie and Danny, he should maybe check their weight. Aye. When he goes to these gyms and it, it wouldn't work out too well for Stevie or Danny. <laughs> but like if it, if it just takes a note of their weight and they're like, hey, this guy's maybe a featherweight, he's fucking eight four kilos, and like, like that stuff would would help look after the fighters. It'd also keep them more professional in between the fights. I think. Aye, that's that's what I was going to say. Maybe knowing that getting the weight checked, they wouldn't. Yep. They wouldn't let themselves go up and then because obviously yes, I know as you get older, it's harder. Yep. Get, mm-hmm. gets harder to yeah, get the definitely. weight done and I think the other thing with weight cutting as well is ultimately if you're, you're cutting that amount of water that's it's, it's not just dangerous to during the weight cut but the danger is in the fight I mean you obviously know especially in boxing the amount of deaths that have happened because guys have dehydrated themselves that much your performance that, suffers but then aye. you're more susceptible to like head damage like aye. trauma and stuff like that so um, it'll, it'll kind of stop that with one championship I think I would be interested to 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 see it, see it happening mere across the board mm-hmm. in mace combat sorts because the sports are dangerous enough as it is yeah. uh, without adding extra things in um, but yeah getting up to this fight as well fight week how's, how's the nerves and stuff like that is that something you're um, it'll be a bit different with one championship mm-hmm. I think it's a bigger setup and stuff like that so yeah. maybe I might be a bit of nerves but usually I'm quite quite alright I know as long as I've trained hard and put the work in then I feel quite comfortable it, it's it's different. See if you've see if you've took a fight in like short notice and somebody's like they used to just phone you up like but you'd take fights when you're like um, kind of amateur level and whatever else you'd take fights in like two weeks notice or whatever and then you know you've not been properly training um, but if you've properly trained you've been putting in the work for like eight to ten weeks then and you're already training all year round aye. then you're confident I'm so, confident so you feel like you've done everything you, you aye, can do I mean you've ticked all the boxes even aye. like. But for this one, I'm I'm feeling brilliant. The fact that I've come in and done the extra sparring with the wee gloves, everything else, and been putting in the work, training twice a day, six days a week. Um, I'm confident, confident for it. I just want to go out and perform. Aye. That's it. And it's, it's more just about performing. Mm-hmm. Aye, you've gained a good account Aye. yourself. That's it, performing. Aye, that's it. And I guess with the nerves thing as well, there's nerves nerves are not necessarily a bad thing. Having an element of nerves is good, mm-hmm. I guess. It's how you how you control them. Like you say, if you've Aye. done everything you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe when we you're talking earlier about all the stuff that Tampa going into Aye. that, if you get into the fight, that stuff would play in the back of your mind Aye, then. No, just all the ticks uh, all the box boxes are all ticked now. So it's just a case of getting out there and performing. And so it's just yeah. a, it's just really you're kind of dying to just get to the fight that's now. it it's, it's just that it, close it's, it's even when it gets to like two weeks you're just like I just want the fight right. to happen like it, you just get to that point where you've been training for so long and or training you just you want to just go out there and fight now and how, how is it obviously we've just uh, we've just Christmas and New Year the how, how yeah. has that been in cat is it something you've done before over Christmas and New Year no, or was I, that a new I, experience I, kind of, I fought in March before so it's Aye. not been um it's not been as intense over Christmas, but it's quite good. It works out quite good for me, to be honest. Um, two weeks, I had two weeks off. Like Aye. the kind of building trade shuts down, so I had two weeks off, like you to, to just chill out and properly train twice a day and get proper rest. So Aye. it's worked out well for me. Um, it was hard, but because I'm staying with my missus grand now, we're kind of renovating the house now. Um, but we've been staying there for a year and she just every time she makes you a cup of coffee or a tea or something she just want to give you five biscuits and the cakes <laughs> and especially over Christmas time she right. just try to feed you I know, you know so what I mean there's, there's only <laughs> you know what you've got to eat but I, she's understanding now the last like the last two weeks she's been she understands I'm just saying no and that's it but Aye. she just tries to keep feeding you Ah, that's what Grand's day, wasn't it? That's what Grand's day. Probably don't understand it's how it just works. Like, it's just like, she sits in the biscuits and then she'll sit two biscuits and she'll be like, it's all right, I'll not tell him, mate. It's all right, it's a wee secret between me and you. But it's, 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 it's no that, you know what I mean? Aye, aye. Those two biscuits are going to add up. 
So do, <laughs> some way speak, I speak to uh, guys that are coming uh, A lot of fighters I don't know if this is something you do A lot of fighters seem to watch food channels And all that when they're cutting weight no, Is that no, no, don't, You don't, don't, you don't torture to yourself I don't talk right, to right. That's, that's horrific no, it, I end up drooling that's Drooling actually, watching videos of people baking cakes And stuff like that no. A few of the guys at the gym here seem to do that yeah, They're weirdos <laughs> but, It's that out of sight out of mind thing Don't, don't think about I that know, I just, I just Stay focused. I know I get my meals done picking a balanced prep, so I know what I need to eat. Mm-hmm. So I've got my my meals there. I know what I need to eat, and that's it. No, it keep, keeps you. That's it. it keeps me focused. That's it, and it's easy enough. Um, how, how helpful is that? See, like you're saying, obviously, just a shout out to the balance prep. Uh, is it? it helps you. Mm-hmm. How how big a help is that for you in a fight camp to have it, your meals sorted and it's you don't massive, have to worry? Um, especially like restriction of time and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You can't. Eat, can I spend like you've not got an hour to prep a meal and Aye. wait for something to cook as well and you're already tired like you've been training in the morning you've been at work all day like you just want to have your meal your meal's there you heat it up that's it and eat it that's it and then you can get your hours sleep or whatever before training at night come back in that's it heat it up boom it's there and you know what you're eating you know the calories you're getting everything's right. all there well, that's it, you too. don't need to think about it because sometimes if, if you need to sit and if you're if you're being lazy and you've come in you're tired you're going to go, oh, I'll just pick something up. And before no, you know it, you'll end up getting a takeaway. And it's no good quality food. Aye, aye, you know certain. what you need to get? You need to get proper food in you. And you I guess pro- if... Like, recover. I guess if you're not a good cook as well, that doesn't help. Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> so, no. probably better off. That's it. <laughs> um, just while we're still talking about weight and food, no, I just wanted to ask you, James, what was the, what was the worst weight, weight cut you had? Uh, I had two, two I can think of. One is when I flew to Japan to fight... Um, I got on the plane at 63 and a half kilos. It was one of the first times I'd fought at 61. And I think I got off the plane at 67. Um, and to weigh, in the, we, to weigh in the next day, we, we arrived at the hotel. They took us to the office to check our weight. And we had to weigh in the next day. It was about 15 hours or something to weigh in. But the contract for that, it was a good purse for that fight. But the, the contract had in it that if I missed weight, I was liable for my purse my opponent's purse my flights in my hotel fuck so it came <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck me that me a it worked to about 8,000 pounds right so I was like uh, I need to make this weight here so <laughs> there's just daft wee things like we weren't allowed in a sauna because some of our guys had tattoos so they're like you're not allowed in here because it's, it's the, the, the gangsters have the tattoos so I had a sauna suit ways and stuff like that um, I had to put a sauna suit on and walk about this park for a wee bit and then we're putting us in like these hot baths and that, but we made it fine and stuff. But it was just a, it was the time constrictions. Then I had retained water on the plane, um, and then another one when I when I fought the last time I fought Ty, uh, I was made to fight at sixty one kilos for an ISK title, a, a world title against a Ty called Rung, and they changed it to fifty nine kilos about two weeks out, and right. I was like at this point I was like. I'm fucking fighting for that title. I'll Aye. make it. <laughs> which is, I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But that that sixty, getting to sixty one was a stretch for me. Get, getting to fifty nine, it was like fifty nine point whatever. That was fucking horrific. So uh, every time you hit me, I felt it. I was just like, I'm too wee. I, like, this is this isn't good. I'd also still been doing jujitsu and stuff at that point, and I, I could mind just getting closer to the fight and getting lighter and lighter and. People just ragged on me a bit that normally wouldn't they? But they they too stick out. But none of them were pleasant. The the Neil Siri fight when I fought at sixty three point five was was decent. It was one hundred and forty pounds. Right. It was comfortable because I, I could diet down pretty easy at sixty six, um, and then it was a, it was a wee water cut. But the rest of my cuts to to sixty one was a case of diet down to sixty six, and then twenty four hours it, it was always try to lose. If it was eight pounds and under, I was like relatively happy. A right. couple of times, if, if it was eight point fucking one pound, it was like, oh, this is going to be brutal. <laughs> um, but none of them were, none of them were that. Because I didn't know what I was doing, I've changed stuff up, and I started water loading near the end of my career, and it was getting easier. And then uh, manipulating salt and stuff like that, like the way guys do now, mm. I was get, getting the hang of that. That got a wee bit easier, but the first couple, like now, it was just. Are you were effectively in the like, sort of, obviously because I know America weight cutting's been a hang about with wrestling and that, but. Yeah, here you were in effectively what we'd call the what test dummy era. Uh, yeah, and just... I was well me Paul was doing a nutri- nutrition degree at Glasgow Uni, so he, he was like, Let's try this. <laughs> and like, brilliant. And then I was I was coming for a kickboxing background and training me a lot of boxers, so they were like, just run it off. I was like, I can't fucking run anymore. Like I'm, I'm training twice a day and like good night and just do another fucking six miles. So 
running about Lanark like an idiot, but a, a lot of it was trial and error. Um, and then a, a lot of it was just that mental strength at the end, like, you need to make it. And then we had this peer pressure on us where it was like, you can't embarrass the team by not making weight and shit. And you're like, I'll never let my teammates do I'll never let my teammates put me back in the bath. And like, even when I fought in uh, Bama, I think I, I, I came out the hot bath and I'd stupidly locked the door. Yeah. And uh, I've sat up too fast, fell and bashed my head off the sink. And then the next thing I remember is Gary's broken the room door. He's taking my sauna suit, trousers off, and I'm waking up and he's like, why is he taking my trousers off? I'm just <laughs> trying to get to him. And he's like, you fucking locked the door and you fell out and bashed your head. I was like, I might not make this fight. I've smashed my head off the sink. A big lump on my head, but the, the fight was all right. But it was just daft things like that, like wee things. There you go, guys. Yeah. Uh, the things you don't see, the, the, the behind the camera stuff, there's fucking mental that falling back and it's you're not there's quite that's happened to quite a few fighters you hear the guys doing that well, we uh, didn't know at the time like all, all, every, well, most mm. of the guys who were running about that time were fainting coming out of these stupid baths Aye. and they were making it too hot and putting too much salt in there was like a formula with that where I think you go in the bath at 108 degrees on the, you take a thermometer away look and you got it go up to 115 and then you start sweating and then you sit for the 20 minutes then you take the water out and you cool before you move and and we're not even using the salt we were just f- fucking filling the bath with salt and sitting in it Aye. Like, and it became that thing like, like see who can sit in the longest and it was just just ridiculous now so now that's last like if you're struggling that's last ditch now um, we still don't use the salt too much and we're, we're on point with the, the temperature and the water and stuff was before it was like these wrestlers are going into these hot baths putting a sauna suit on and wrapping up the towels let's do that I just <laughs> just jump into a boy because I mind uh, was it Heron Baral mind he I think he fell coming out uh, Aye, uh, a hot it's, bath it's so common like you can't the change of elevation when you come out the bath just makes you dizzy Aye. Um we, we've had some really like Back back then with some really bad ones. Thankfully, we're a bit smarter with it now. See, I'd be terrified. You'd be terrified. I'm bad enough when I'm going to the bath and it's quite warm. I know I'm constantly covering myself because I'm just by no way to burn myself. Oh, it's the worst. Like, like must be try ter- to sit in it and stuff. It's fucking horrific. I think it's a slow process. You slowly lowering yourself in. Aye, and then you're arguing with every cunt. Like, where's that timer? How long left? They're like, you've been <laughs> for five minutes. Like, I know you're lying. Like, show me the timer. Pale, oh. co- pale Scottish skin as well in a hot bath. You come out like a cooked lobster. Aye, uh, but it was either that or the, the sauna. Back then, I was like, I'm, I hate the sauna. I don't like the hot air in my lungs. Um, I was like, I'll, I'll, if there's a bath, I'll have the bath. But it's just it's just a learning process, that shit. I'm the kind of other way about. I've right. done a salt bath once and I was like, never again. So what was the so worst was, thing about it for you? Was it just the heat? Just or? the the bath. It was, it was the how you felt. It felt it's like it just horrible. drained me. See the Aye. feeling like, see when I came out and stuff like that, I felt like I was just like jelly. Like, I, I couldn't feel my legs. Like see my Aye. legs, see me walking and stuff like that. I felt like I was just walking in kind of thin air and my legs were all jelly and stuff like that. So just my whole body felt sore. Like felt, um, it was horrific, um, so I've always used the sauna. Just be, be better for you. I've always used. Better. I've just used a bit of sweet sweat and stuff like that, and Aye. get in the sauna, heat up, and then obviously as James is saying, like towel up after in between. Do you get the card out and scrape and all that? Aye, so just towel up in between, just heat yourself up in the sauna, and then come back out, towel up, and then get back in, heat yourself up, and then whatever else. But I've always found that. My body deals with it a bit better, but it's each to their own. I know Aye. some people prefer the bath and some people hate the sauna and it's vice versa. What's the worst weight, weight cut you, you've had so far? I've had bad ones. I, I remember I used to fight 59 kilo. Right. 59 kilo was horrific. <laughs> um, it, it's even like back in the day, like 59 kilo, I mean, it, you never knew anything about weight cutting and stuff mm-hmm. like that. There wasn't so much. Let's like, see YouTube and all the videos. You can Google everything and look Aye. online in your phone and stuff like that. And then there wasn't stuff like that. It was just like people were saying, I knew what I had to make weight. So I ended up, I, it was daft stuff. It was talking years ago, this is about 10 years ago, but you were doing stuff like eating three bowls of Rice Krispies a day so that's what you would eat you were trying to run off you were trying to run off and then as James was saying you were just running everybody was like just just go run let's see if you need to make weight you need to run so see instead of training the last week all you were doing was running and then eating three bowls of Rice Krispies crap it's it's mental but you just you never knew anything better you never knew things back then it's mad when you say 10 years ago I mean that's 2010 that's this is so that, that long ago it's mm-hmm. mental how, how things yeah. have changed I, I don't think you'll get many nutritionists advising three bowl no. of Rice Krispies now maybe no. Cocoa Pops but no Rice Krispies no. I think that's 
in part due to the, the popularity of MMA in the US. Like any, mm-hmm. Anytime an industry starts making a lot of money, especially a sport, you're going to get experts kind of gravitating towards it. So mm-hmm. you had that when, when these nutrition guys started to try to, like, if they can get a, a percentage of a fighter's purse and earn a living for it, they're going to move towards it the same way the, the, the kind of strength conditioning coaches and whatever else did. So it's been good that... Um, the, the good thing is all that knowledge is, is very accessible now. Like guys who are, who are struggling are they're too lazy to Google. Like Aye. you can you can Google all that stuff, or you can go on courses, or or just ask. Like Stevie's really Stevie's is really really on point with that stuff. He's he's very good. He retains it so well. Mm. Like you sit and ask him, and he'll be like, one gram of sugar holds this amount of water. I, if I have this, blah blah blah, blah and the and salt and stuff. He knows it holds like four hundred. One gram of sugar is four hundred mils of water, or whatever. He knows all this shit off the top of his head. So, but you can message him and he'll give. He'll say, "This is what I have done for this fight, this fight, and that fight." Mm-hmm. It's all straight to like like, get, like guys who are at the forefront of their field, like Dolce and stuff, or Lockhart. No, and he he shares all that information with everybody in here. So it's just everything. All the information you need is is there, and it means you don't need to be that that kind of daft guy who's like, I'll just. I'll eat my free bowls of rice krispies Aye. instead of sauna. Fuck okay. <laughs> That's, That's just great. You never knew any better. I know. It's, obviously, you know. obviously now you can YouTube stuff, but as James says, like you, you hear how somebody's cut, you can even watch, like see the UFC guys, you can mm-hmm. watch their videos of how they're cutting their weight and what they're doing and everybody's better. Like, get more knowledge now. There's so much more knowledge out there to do things right. Ah, it is back then there wasn't it and it, as well we, obviously you were saying you, you started uh, Ty because I thought it was when the MMA do you notice see when there's big booms happened in the MMA especially around obviously when Conor McGregor came mm-hmm. in did you see more people coming into Ty gyms and ah, stuff like that it, as well it was massive see, the, see when Conor McGregor hit it felt like everybody like there was Thai boxing gyms were a lot busier and all that mm-hmm. as well it made every kind of sport bigger Aye. Um, like it made kickboxing it made Thai it made everything bigger um, just because like People never knew anything about MMA. Aye. They would be like, oh, are you watching the UFC? Or do you do that UFC? That was aye, aye, even aye, guys that. in work that never knew anything about anything. All they did was care about football. But oh, they're like, oh, are you watching the Conor McGregor fight? Everybody aye. knew who Conor McGregor was. Aye, it's definitely been a, it's across the board. He's obviously done a lot. And obviously Conor, we know he's, he's got a fight coming up against so, for Conor and Cerrone obviously are fighting this, this month. Before we get into a wee bit of that, let's talk, that's a pay-per-view. So you need to pay in country. the UK now. I, I'm really I, I like watching Connor fight. I love watching Cerrone fight, but unfortunately, looking at that card and you want me to pay for that after what we've just seen with Usman and Colby. I mean, come on, you fuck man. But I mean, that's I get what they're trying to do. Obviously, the corners are their biggest star. We've got, but what do you think about them putting that card on? Yeah, let's just take the look at the rest of the card, not just the corner fight. Do you think that's going to sell well in the UK? Or do you think it's going to stream well illegally in the UK? Uh, it'll stream well. I think the the BT Sport deal and bringing in the pay per view is recent, eh? and there's mm-hmm. backlash to it already. I think the Connor num- Connor will always do better numbers than everybody else, Aye. Um, and especially in in the UK and stuff. So the numbers will be good, but I'd imagine most of them are are going to be on Facebook, like messages and people asking for links. I I think so. I think the problem you've got in the UK first and foremost is. MMA has grown massively in the UK, but it is still no anywhere near where it where it could be. I think anyway. Uh, obviously, especially in Scotland as well, when you've got fit by Rangers, Celtic stuff like that. Um, but I think try to sell fights here when we're not used to the pay per view model. Really, no yeah. for MMA. We're, we're used to paying a subscription every month and getting it. And I, I've. When I speak to folk in America, like, oh, you're very lucky to get that. I was like, but you don't need to sit up to six in the morning to watch fights. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so I think it's quite hard to ask folk to pay their monthly subscription, then pay their pay-per-view and stay up to crazy hours in the morning. Um, I, I, I think ultimately it's going to be a failure. No necessarily the corner, corner fight, but the other problem is they've just no stacked the card. The card's lighter. Apart- it's, it's that, that's, light. that seems to have been their model for... For last year, it's always got the, the big main event. You maybe got a decent co cool main. Apart from that, that last card mm-hmm. we spoke about the last time, the the Usman fight was was pretty good from top to bottom. Um, but the the rest of the card is pretty light. But I, I, I don't know why they put on eleven or thirteen fights with these shows. Like put on eight good fights and leave it. You've got enough guys, especially when, if they make more of them five rounders as well. Like anybody in the top ten, I think should be fighting five fives instead of the three fives. 
See, see, my my thinking with that one was I was what I would have paid for it if they if they'd done this. See if they'd put, made the fight in Ireland or something like that. Mm-hmm. Put put it in a decent sized venue. You can watch it on a, a normal time. Watch it a normal time. Put some good UK fighters in the card. They've got they've got plenty and near UK European fighters in the card. Put on at a decent time. I'm happy to pay the money. If I don't need to stay up to, I, I would actually pay for the London card. If you look, that mm-hmm. card shaped up pretty good. Aye, aye, it's looking um, good. They just added Mike Grundy and stuff like that. Like I'd pay and watch the guys. Probably, mo- I always watch Connor. Um, ev- everybody will, but the re- again, from top to bottom, the London card. You're like, you're interested in the fights because you know the guys have come up through the circuit here and stuff. Aye, def- definitely makes a difference when you know the guys. It's so when you pay attention to, to like Bellator are, are doing pretty well. I quite enjoy watching Bellator. I know some of their, their cards are I just don't know what they've done with them and we'll, we'll come to that later on with Rampage. But uh, you enjoy it because you you know the guys, you might have met the guys before mm-hmm. or spoke to them, so you're you're more invested in seeing how they do. But what what do you make of the have you had a look at the cards, uh, the Cerrone at all? As what you are saying, it is very light. No. Aye. Um it's no doesn't really oh, you obviously watch it because of Conor and Cowboy. Mm-hmm. Of course you will. It's an interesting fight. Aye. Um, I do think, obviously, Connor's going to take it in the first two. Aye, early. Um, early. Um, but it's, it's, an, it's a good fight. Cowboy always puts on a good show as well. He's entertaining. Aye. Every fight he is in, he's entertaining. Aye. It's, when, it, when I lose, you know what I mean? He is entertaining. See, I've got no doubt. I've got no doubt. So there's going to be plenty of people watching it to see Connor. Mm-hmm. Where I'm thinking is streams are so easy to get now. Aye. I mean, if you've got the, like, the IPTV or things like that, they're so easy to get. I personally don't like watching the scheme, so I don't like them stopping that. There's, a guy, the on the, there's a guy on YouTube who, have we talked about this before, he sits with an Xbox controller and the kids oh. on he's playing the PlayStation, <laughs> the kids on he's playing the game on the Xbox, <laughs> but it's the actual fight. Uh, and he's controlling. And I've no clocked on to this yet, that it's an illegal stream. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a guy playing UFC 3 or something. He's my right. favourite, man, I just watch it. <laughs> oh, you know what, we, you, we have <laughs> mentioned like it before, <laughs> I, I need to watch that. Reason being, because I've been playing UFC 3, just so everyone knows I'm the current lightweight champion, but I just won the welterweight belt as well. So, uh, champ, champ. Aye, uh, champ, champ, champ. Aye, yeah, I knocked out Darren Till in the first. Uh, some I never thought I'd say, but aye, uh, uh, it's, it's the card does a bit light. With the fight itself, it's, it's I think it's a good fight. Uh, I I don't know why. Well, I kind of know why they've done it at one seventy. I don't think. I think Connor would have been better getting it down to one fifty five. I think Connor looks better at one fifty five anyway. I think he benefits. I think that's his natural weight. Um, I think the old thing comes into play. Connor's a fast starter. Cerrone's notoriously no. But the question is, does can Connor knock him out in that first round or, or early in the fight? But what do you? How do you see the fight going, James? I think I made that fight. It's the perfect fight for him to come back mm-hmm. style wise. Like you were saying, I think if it was anybody else, they'd maybe not been at one seventy. But but Cerrone can still make. 55 Aye. as well um, he's, he's pretty comfortable there um, it's, if you're lining him up it, Cowboy's a perfect guy he's a slow starter he doesn't deal well with southpaws he doesn't like getting pressured he doesn't like getting hit in the body mm-hmm. and these are all stuff that Connor's excellent at it's, just, it's pretty much what Darren Hill done to him Aye. he's going to come out walk at him pressure him just be coming at him and then wait for him to throw and counter him and it'll be that stabbing like push kick to the belly the left hand, like the left hand's going to come at some point, and he'll mm-hmm. probably be circling back against the cage, which which is where Connor puts people. He'll use the kicks to to kind of control the flanks and the lateral movement. The only thing I, I wouldn't be surprised would be if if a cowboy tries to wrestle, which he, he switched to on the Mike Perry fight yep. recently, um, which would be smart of him. But I think. If you look back at that Khabib fight, like as, as much as everybody thinks Khabib dominated Connor, his, his take down defence was really good in spurts and that. Mm-hmm. And he's not dealing with that level of wrestling with Cowboy. It's a guy that shoots shoots a double leg. It's also really hard to shoot a double leg on the back foot, which is he's going to be, everybody goes, is on the back foot with, with Connor. And I think it's a perfect fight from whether he's carried his power up to 170 and, and puts Cowboy away. But, and, but again, he's been knocked out a bunch of times as well, he's even off till... Um, but I, I think Connor will look good. It's it's a, it's a perfect fight for him. I think if he doesn't get it done in three rounds, but then then Cowboy will be strong four and five, the, the usual. Um, I think I and the, I think the benchmark as well for Connor at one seventy is it's kind of hard to look at the Nate Diaz fights because obviously they went uh, obviously Connor got finished then went went the distance for him, but 
Nate Diaz and one thing Nate Diaz has got is he's a very very difficult guy to finish. I think the last, last I think, well obviously the Masvidal fight, but with that it was Josh Thompson. Yeah, he's, all, he's also a, he's kick. a pressure guy as well. He's mm-hmm. a volume guy, and, and it's his cardio as well. Nate Diaz, his cardio is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, he won't he won't get tired. Aye, that's it. That's the difference. And it's just chin chin wise, it's hard to say because for the couple of folks here, Connor's not got the same power at one seventy. Oh, but Nate Diaz, Nate Diaz isn't the best guy to mm-hmm. show that against because Nate Diaz generally has that's got a tough. really good chin Aye. and and he's very difficult to finish. And Connor did put him in his backside. He, he beat him like he, he beat him quite convincingly in that second fight as well. Like he dropped mm-hmm. him a bunch of times and stuff. Um, right. so. I just think Cowboys had a lot of damage as well mm-hmm. over the years. He's a lot of kind of miles in the clock. You know what I mean? Um, he has took a lot of damage yeah, yeah. had a lot of fights eh? Aye, and there's, there's something else Cow, uh, Cowboy said a while back there obviously he went up to 170 he was doing well it's after a couple losses but Cowboy said himself he wasn't as hungry at 170 because mm. he wasn't having to make the weight yep. uh, so I don't know if uh, if that's played at all into the thinking of uh, uh, Connors camp it may be, mm-hmm. maybe no be at all but uh, do, do you think it do you think it's a, an advantage or a disadvantage for Connor at 170? I think, I don't think, he'll, he'll probably weigh in at 168 or something. No, know, I don't think he'll be cutting to get there. I think, again, it's another guy, it's the same as Diaz, to be honest. It's another guy who can make 55. I just mm-hmm. don't know why. Like, if you give most fighters the option, he's saying like, he's, he's both have made this weight 20 or 30 times or whatever. You get you get the cases of fighters messaging each other on Twitter saying no, like, we're matched at lightweight. Let's get in touch with Sean Shelby and say let's do it ten pounds heavier. You know that that's a good thing. Like it means that what we were talking about earlier. There's they're not having to fucking fight the scales for the eight weeks camp. Mm-hmm. They can just stroll in at a weight they're both comfortable at. Just focus on and, f- and get the best fight out of the two of them. I, I think it'll make for a good fight. I do think that the difference will be uh, um, every time Cowboys went up. That to that elite level in class, he's lost. He's mm-hmm. not. He's like it's why he's had. He's never actually quite made it to the title yet. Um, whereas you forget, Connor's done Holloway. He's done Aldo. He's, the Eddie no. Alvarez fight was incredible. Like that's Connor's best performance, and these are all. They're, they're the top percent guys. They're, they're elite level, championship level. Cha- like they're all. They're all ex- or current champions or former no. champions. Whereas any time Cowboy just gets to that that last wee bit, he falls short. If you look at his record. There's probably about eight guys who've, who've been or were ch- or, or went on to be champions of beat him. He fought, he fought De Sanios for the belt, didn't he? Yeah. De Sanios obviously lost that first round, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you think there's a, there could be a potential mental block there for, for Cerrone as well? He's, he's been open about mental issues before this, like setbacks and stuff, and he does seem to be in a better place mentally since having a kid. He, t- he talks different and stuff, but yeah. I think when he gets... I think when you get to the, the Conor McGregor fight and he's... He's getting his shit all week in the hotel, and then you mm-hmm. get to the, the, the face-offs and the weigh-ins and and all that shit. I, th- I think that'll get to him. I, I I don't think a lot of people can deal with that, other yeah. than so far Diaz, because it's, it's got to everybody else. And the magnitude of the McGregor fight's different from any other fight. And you seen, I think I think it was the, when Cerrone fought Diaz before. Mm-hmm. He, he flicked his hat off at the fucking weigh-in, and he, he he openly admits he's like, I, I just wanted to kill him. He's like, he, he's like that got to me. And, if Diaz is doing that to him, Connor's definitely going to do something and, and fucking annoy him. And it's it's one of the things looking on paper at the two fighters. Obviously, Cerrone's a mere experienced fighter, but in the big pressure fights, Connor's a mere experienced fighter. And then Connor does handle it through all the shit talking, all that. He's he, he seems to handle and thrive in that sort of situation. It looks like anyway. Yeah, he's built for that. Him, mm-hmm. he's he's built for that. You could see it when when he was at Cage Warriors. You're like, he's too big for this platform. He's too big for mm-hmm. a thousand people in a sports center. He, he's, he's, he needs to be in those the, the bigger arenas even like the, the bigger the challenge for him the, the, the better he'll be other than the, the Khabib thing which if the rematch that, that, that could be a wee bit different I still mm-hmm. maybe pick Khabib to win but he's still done he done better against Khabib than a lot of people give him credit for I, I think that I think that rematch happens if Connor gets through Cerrone which isn't he isn't he any, any, any way shape or form a foregone conclusion yeah um, I think that's. I know Khabib's coming out and saying, "Oh, that's uh, that, that that fight." He's he he needs to win ten fights and stuff like that. But I chuck that money at you. Yeah. Nah, it's, different, it's different when the money gets flung at him. And I, I would have no doubt the UFC because of who Conor is. I take no doubt if he refused that fight. I think the UFC would probably strip him. Because Con- Conor's it's Connor's a hard been, one, isn't it? It's a hard one. That is, but ultimately, if we then we know about the UFC and the, their new owners, it's a business. It's if, a they don't, if they don't do that, they'll make him an interim 
title against right. somebody else. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, maybe Gaethje or something, but they'll it, it'll definitely be there'll be some so, harms. Obviously, I know uh, Khabib's manor managers. Obviously, Justin Gaethje's manager as well. Uh, I, I I would like to see Conor and Gaethje. I think that would be a, a, a fun. Gaethje's just one Gaethje's of the guys to watch. He's just. He's wild, and he's he, cowboy's a bit like that. He's wild. Do you know what I mean? He's like he's, he's just not he's just wild. Gage, you know what I mean, that, that, that's what Gage is going. Gage's going fights are ridiculous. Some of them are just ridiculous. I'm just going to war. He just basically he can wrestle as well. Aye. That's the scary thing. He's like a really good wrestler, but he, he just wants to go to war. Great wrestling, fucking insane. He low never kicks. plays it safe. Never. I and he's. I think he's got. I think he's just like mentally. He's not getting any mental blocks. He's just like. <laughs> he just never. Somebody's plays it getting safe. knocked out. It could be me. Aye. It might be you. I'm only to roll the dice. He's dangerous, but as well, Aye. somebody like that that's to verse. somebody like Connor versus Gaethje. Aye. He, he might. He obviously might set him up, and he might obviously. Connor's great at that. See the lean back mm-hmm. left hand. Um, I think he'll catch Cowboy bit quite a lot. Aye. Um, the thing Cowboy could do is like obviously right hand, right kick, and because he's trying to set him up for the left all the time, uh, add the kick on, and that'll kind of stop that. But um, he might catch Gaethje with something like that. But Gaethje's wild. It's just he's unpredictable as well. Like Aye. see some of the shots he throws, it's it's unpredictable. And for a striker versus somebody like that, it's unpredictable. It's hard to read. He throws leg kicks to crunch. He's crunching his leg kicks. They do some damage as well. His leg kicks are... It's it's just, uh, he's got an awkward, weird nah. weird style. A style that's hard to... And hang on, that's what I mean. If you can, I, it's hard to see, see when you're like, against somebody that you can't read. Like, you usually you can you can see things. Like somebody's going through a jab, they're going through a right kick. and You can see after a few moves, but see if somebody keeps changing and stuff like that. I don't even think Gaethje knows what he's doing at times. I think right. he's just throwing it. just throws... I, I, I honestly he's one of my it's, favourite it's, in, it's interesting it's really interesting it's, to see him fight and um, he, he, he has got that wrestling there but he I, just, he, he, I don't I, I wouldn't see him using it at all against no. Connor because I, I think he wants he wants to make sure he puts on a show yeah. as well because I think he wants to be no, he obviously wants to get get to the top get to the belt but he mm. wants to be an exciting fight yeah. as well he chases the bonuses uh, and he's, he's done that for, he was exciting coming up through PFL and then He's come into UFC and everybody's talking about him after three fights. Because, nice. because of the style and the way he fights, everybody wants to watch him fight. He's, he's probably the most exciting guy in, in, the, in the most exciting division. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's somebody you always want to watch. And, and he's smart with that. He knows what he's doing. He's always he's talked about it, getting out and all that, him as well, mm-hmm. of this amount of fights. And then I'm out here when he's made enough money and stuff. But he's, he's collected every time he fights, he's going to get a bonus. Because of the, the run he had in the PFL, he never came into like the, the UFC entry level contracts. He came in on a, a higher level pay Aye. and stuff like that because he was a champion elsewhere and he's making good money. But he's, you know, when he fights, you're going to get a fight. Yeah, and he's one of the rare guys that when he loses fights, very rarely does his stock go down. Yeah, it's because of the way he fights. Eh? That, that's, that's exactly it. And that's what the fans want to see. As be honest, fans want to see wars, yeah. uh, which you get for Gaethje and. Uh, Obviously, the mere fans watching and want to see you, the better for the, the promotion, ultimately the better for you. I'd um, love to see him fight Tony Ferguson. Oh, that'd be, that'd be, that'd awesome. be ridiculous. That'd be great, man. Yeah. I've, to, I, I've Tony's, he's, again, Tony's another guy. He just oh, does some fucking crazy... T- Tony's clearly crazy. Uh, let's be honest, definitely. he's crazy, but uh, he's, he's a super fun guy to watch. Uh, and so he's, you hear them talk about and he like trained for like six hours a day and stuff like that. Like, uh, you hear a lot of the kind of people speaking round about him. And it's yeah. it's no him. He's no telling people. He's no making up lies or it. It's people running about him, just saying he's lapping people. Aye, at sprints and stuff. It's like a different level of fitness and craziness. Yeah, he is. He's a he is a cardio machine, and I think that's potentially a the pace he puts a big weapon for him against uh, against Khabib because we've mm-hmm. seen Khabib slowing down and tiring at the end of, end of fights, and that surely God has to be a fight we see that. I think what the UFC are maybe thinking Tony Khabib. Obviously, and then potentially one of that then is on the fights corner. Would you would you think it's a better matchup looking at the two for Connor, Tony or Khabib? I know we've seen Connor Khabib before. Uh, I think Ferguson. I think he's more hittable. Mm-hmm. And he'll, it, it, it wasn't that long ago Ferguson was losing rounds to Lando Venata mm-hmm. and stuff like That's that. Right, um, really. He's a wee bit of a, a slower starter. He is, he is reckless and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. again... He lost that first round with Kevin Lee, yeah. and like, whereas Khabib's been so fucking dominant with everybody. The pe- people always going about K- Khabib, boy, oh, get hit off Michael Johnson. He was off mm. balance, but he's never. Lo- I don't think he's, other than the Glace and T-Bill fight away back when. Um, 
it, it's so dominant that in, until somebody even takes a round off him, you're like, how the fuck is people going to beat this guy? No. With, with Ferguson, you've seen him lose rounds before, and you know, it, like, even when he's, he's coming out of the fights, he always bloodies people up and stuff, but he always comes out cutting stuff Aye. himself, and he's not really fought anybody who hits the way Connor hits yet. No. Um, and and his wrestling's a wee bit easier to deal with and stuff, but I think Tony, Tony they're, they're both hard fights for him, mm-hmm. but I think uh, you, you have to go and pass it. Past the uh, evidence, he fights, and Khabib's just so far looked like fucking like nobody in the division's going to touch him now. You need to look up the divisions to, to Usman and, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. who can neutralize that wrestling and, and the strength that he's got to, to kind of think about who's going to beat him currently. I think, uh, I don't think we're going to see like Khabib fight five, six more times. I don't think it's going to happen. We can he fight, he, you know, he always takes a portion of the year off with the Ramadan mm-hmm. thing, so. He's limited there, and he's not a daft guy. Him, he's, he's so smart. He'll he'll walk away. I'd imagine like thirty one and zero or something. If, and it'd be cool if he'd done it and then never came back like a lot Aye. of like, fighters mm-hmm. normally do. Like, and they need that extra payday. Yeah, Aye. he's just opened that gym in, in Russia. He just Aye. opened his, his place in Dagestan. Sorry, and then he he can go get and travel the world and do the stuff. And everybody's always got to want to see that guy. But it'd be cool if he got. And just walked away for it. And, and then I'd quite like to see the him and GSP. Uh, that's yeah, it's just uh, whether it's going to happen because they know GSP's come back for one fight and then he's he's away again. Yeah. You know what I mean, that's why they don't want GSP. See, for to me, if there was to do that, if there was ever an opportunity to open up a one sixty five division, that fight you just said there, that's a fight mm. to open it up. Uh, GSP Khabib. Uh, for me, that I, I think probably Khabib's team are looking at that as potentially the swan song fight, potentially the fight mm-hmm. to finish it off. It's an opportunity for GSP to come back and just show. No, wait a minute, I'm I'm still the best guy kicking about. Yeah, uh, I'd pick Khabib in that fight now as well. I, I, think, so. I think GSP's been doing some test cuts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been doing some test cuts and stuff. I think with GSP as well, he's one of the guys. He's never been at the gym. He's no, he, mm. he's no stop training or anything like that. Uh, He's, he's kept himself in great shape, um, which obviously... He's similar to, to what Chris was saying about the, the rumours about when, when guys come for these camps and they're like, trained with Tony and he was doing this. George, uh, GSP's the same. I know Stevie's trained a lot with him. Aye. I've got all their sparring footage and stuff saved on a laptop and and stuff like that. And he's he's the same. He, he, he flew into London to train with Hodger Gracie for four days and... It was then two hour privates and then his classes and all he'd done for four days was real naked choke and you're like, I'm pretty sure he knows a fucking real naked choke. Aye. But he's like, no, I've got the details they get into it. It's, it's second to none. It was a real naked choke. He beat Bispin where you look at it, mm-hmm. it's different for a normal. It's real, different. It's, it's deeper than a normal real naked choke. But you're like, he's obsessed with martial arts to that level where Aye. he'll fly for Canada to London to learn details on a move that he's already beaten guys with. To fix and it's the same when he goes to Danahars and, and everything else. So he he's a guy I think he's the, the legends are about him and the stories about him training mm-hmm. are like they're they're different for everybody else. So Aye. it's the same when, when people come back and say they they trained with we could be like uh, Miles Price did at AKA. Aye. You know, like he's fucking different when he grabs you. So it'd be fun to watch. I think I, I think GSP is he's getting older, like Aye. biology catches up with everybody mm-hmm. and then he, he, I don't think he looked great in the Bispin fight. I thought he got Bispin at the perfect time, and style wise, Bispin's always perfect. So he's, not, not, he's not a knockout guy. He's, not, he's got bit, decent wrestling, but no great wrestling. Um, and on reflection, now, if you look at the punches that always got, that caught Bispin, it's where he's, he's eye. Yeah, that's right. You can't see yeah. the eye. And plus, GSP was never a. He was never knocking guys out clean with one or two punches. No. He, was, he was grinding on them with the. With the he would jab his way until they extended my shot and double leg him and then punish him on the mat. But when you see him like hurting Bispin with left hooks and stuff, you're like, but there's something wrong with Bispin here, didn't it? Wasn't it a case of GSP looks phenomenal? He, he, he's got some kind of mad, uh, he, like a bloated belly now. He's got some, something wrong with his indigestion, his digestive system. He was getting treated for that they, they spoke about. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could see it like when he was even in the cage. It didn't look as good as he did what, there's a reason he fought 84 and no, no uh, 170 mm-hmm. um, and I think him cutting down with probably at that age like he's he must be nearly 40 now Aye. to come down to fight like the most dominant guy at, at that weight would, would be a bad thing for him and I think then if we're talking about guys that are keeping themselves in great physical condition we'll look at uh, Fedor Rampage 
what, what do you say? <laughs> Fuck me. When I saw it, right, I'd obviously, I hadn't seen much stuff leading up to it and then I got in the morning and I flicked on the fight and I was like, it's not going to be Rampage, you're like, fuck. And then I saw somebody put a side-by-side photo and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, he's, the, the same when guys move up weight and they're, they're doing it right and putting muscle on, it did look like he just went, oh, I'll just eat fucking everything. I don't even think you train for that. Nah, I, that I, I watched it and I think I made some comment I was like he's took a dive <laughs> and then he, he posted some tweet thing saying hey, got the envelope and I'm back in the hotel room with my girls it's like he's, it's like he's basically just said I've got paid and I'm in a hotel room in Japan with some Japanese woman I mean the, I mean, the notorious the, the, the stories about Rampage with training were bad anyway he was yeah. notoriously somebody that hated training mm-hmm. uh, and going off that footage it seems like he's hated it a bit more it was right. it, he, he clearly done it for the money I don't know he never really trained for it, took it seriously. Eh? The, pr- the problem I've got with that is when you're aesthetically looking at that and you're like, ah, come on, you fuck, man, this is a fucking... That's Bellator. This bur- bur- I know, it's, I know, but come on, I'm, I'm, I'm bigging up Bellator for that day in the it, UK, but... The UK shows and the European shows are pretty good. Um, I, I love that London one and the Dublin one's excellent. I'm looking forward to the, the February one. But the but Bellator, way, the two things that you're going to get with it is... The can crushers, you've got MVP against that yeah. Japanese oh. guy as a co main event, and then you get these old guys that we looked to. It wasn't that long ago, the Hoist Gracie fight, Ken Shamrock there. So <laughs> they wheel out these old guys and, and make them the main event, and you're like, okay. Feather should have, should have stopped fighting about 10 years ago, and Rampage probably shouldn't have started fighting. He, he, he'll open like he doesn't like fighting, he's like, I can make money doing it, Aye. I'm pretty good at it, but I didn't like it. Um, you're like, I can't believe this is a main event. It's the problem I've got with that is Bellator is a promotion. If you're looking to get up, one AFC, uh, obviously UFC are the benchmark, but there's no there's no structure in Bellator to. But just build your divisions. Just make it clear this is the divisions where every this is the titles. This is what you do to get because right now some of these sideshow fights are putting on. I'm like, well, leave that to Ryzen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bury it on the undercard. Like, I just you need to... or rather than pay. Fuck knows how much they paid for Bell- that fight, how much they paid Fedor and Rampage. I'm sure it was a considerable amount of money. Yep. The amount they paid they to, I guarantee they could have put on two cards with brilliant fighters, talented fighters who would really probably could do the money. Uh, and it's guys they can build their reputation. I think it's time to maybe get away from the old guys and they've done their bit and they're legends and obviously you've got to respect them for that. But there is a time where you go, right, we don't want to see this anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like you say, like. Right, um, Ken Shamrock and Hoist. I mean, that's got to watch a fight in a nursing home, isn't it? Tito Ortiz fighting still, and you're like, what the fuck's going on here? Aye, Christ. Like, there's, there's so many, there's some really good fighters at Bellator as well, mm-hmm. like uh, like Pitbull and, and Chandler and all these guys. There's some excellent fighters there. And then with Lima and stuff like that, and you're like, get the, get, put these guys on the main event in the big shows and, and match them in good fights. The problem is as well, when you're putting fights like that on, it discredits the promotion and then it takes the shine off guys like Pitbull and Lima yeah. and that as well. It, it, it actually takes a wee bit of, like, obviously the people that know know, but it takes a bit of legitimacy away off them because they're fighting in Bellator and a lot of people think, well, that's just it's a fucking sideshow at times. Yeah. Um, but aye, it was uh, horrible to watch. Uh, it kind of made me think of the, obviously passed away now, Kimbo Slice and Dado Five thousand or whatever. Yeah, it took a heart attack. I, yeah. Fuck it, I heart attack after the fight. It's potentially one of the worst MMA fights I've ever, I've yeah. ever seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, there's a lot of potential there with Bellator, but especially in the American shows, not. You need to get it together. Fucking, uh, do you think? Do you think they'll let Rampage fight again? He's probably that he, Bellator probably would. He's still a like a relevant name with with some kind of people that want to watch it, but. I, I would definitely I never even watched it I've seen the ending right. and I was like, I'm not watching Aye, that's, that's, I that's didn't, that's I didn't stay up and watch the show I just go go to clips for the fight and watch that and thought Christ that's, that's I watched not... um, the PFL stuff recently did you watch that in New Year? no I, I've, I've went, I went back and watched Loch Nain's fight and I've watched a, I've watched a few of the fights the fights I, there were good I like, I like the PFL I like yeah. the way they're doing it as well yeah. uh, with, that, with that contract PFL were obviously formerly World Series weren't they yeah yeah. Also fine. That's, it's, it's good that they've put a, a sort of different take on things the way they do it like a season yeah um, but they, they fights there were good to watch like I, I obviously watched it to watch Brendan but um, I checked out the rest of it as well because I was actually looking at, at some of the when they've, they've got these million dollar eight man tournaments and mm-hmm. stuff and when Stevie's 
contract was kind of getting renegotiated there we're like I wonder if going to PFL would be an option because you could you could do well in those eight man tournaments and then Aye. there's a couple of them that's been the same guy that's won it two years on the bounce so that's like two million dollars or other space less than two years and they're, they're obviously getting paid fight purses as well yep they get a salary these guys eh? uh, oh right right so it's monthly salary like you would do like a football player yep. or that and I think it's like you get paid to fight as well. Pay, uh, you get paid, then you then there's a point system for if you win the fight, what round you win it yeah. in. And That's why Rory McDonald's like went there. Aye. Um, aye. So he's left uh, Belgium. I never knew that. I never knew that. It like, it's that it's diff- like it'll go bust in a couple aye. of years that way. Yeah. Aye, <laughs> aye. We'll be there in a couple aye, of years. Depending on how much. Going. Well, yeah. Listen, if, they, if that happens, as long as the fighters can make some cash off well, it, that's good uh, for the fighters, the likes of that. That's, yeah. that's good. That's uh, good. Uh, it's a bit of fresh take, the way the point system and all that works as well. It's. It's, it's something different to watch mm-hmm. the way it's structured and they've got good fighters now a good product obviously they'll get one of the one of the uh, biggest prospects in the UK and Brendan Lockney as well yep. and that's him one, one two now isn't it? That's that's two, aye. so he'll be in the tournament I think he's in the tournament next year um, sure. and I, I could see him doing pretty well in that tournament well, if he wins a million quid hopefully the exchange rate's pretty good that year and it's no <laughs> Brexit's yeah. no kilt and that million turns into a couple World of grand World War III might not get might Stevie complained about that Stevie Ray about the, the exchange rates for win bonuses <laughs> <laughs> Get fucking shafted in the exchange rates, but uh, I think I think we'll we'll wrap up there, guys. Uh, thanks very much for for coming thanks on, Chris. For uh, thanks obviously, uh, best of luck on the on the thirty first when the fight comes up, and we we'll look forward to watching you out there with a the small gloves on. Brilliant, thanks a lot, mate. And uh, for everybody tuning in, guys, as always, uh, we appreciate you watching the show. Just remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave us a comment. Um, and yeah, we appreciate that. Thanks very much. <laughs>